Langchain is a great framework that makes it very easy to build applications using large language models. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Pandas data frame agents of Langchain and with it we're going to analyze and explore a data set. Before we get started, make sure you have Pandas and Langchain installed on your computer and make sure you have a OpenAI API key. To make it easier on your first project, you can just define the API key on your Jupyter Notebook. So you can say OpenAI underscore API underscore key and then paste your API key in here. Or if you want, you can also add it to your environment variables and then read them with python.env library. But we're just going to um, define it here for now. If you use Langchain before, I'm sure you know how easy to use it is. So the first thing we need to do is to import some modules. One of the modules that we're importing is chat open AI. So that is the module that helps us communicate with the model and the create pandas data frame agent from Langchain agents. That is the one that's going to help us do um, alterations or calculations on our data frame. Just to show you how to set up and use the pandas data frame agent, I'm just going to start with a very easy data set for now. And then we can go into a more interesting data set that is an Airbnb data set, all the Airbnb listings in Amsterdam. By the way, if you want to follow along with me as I'm coding, you can go to the description and get the uh, notebook from GitHub. All right, so let's call the Iris, the famous Iris data frame from pandas as an example. But I forgot to import pandas, of course. And let's quickly take a look at this data frame. And then I'm going to create a chat variable. We will start a chat OpenAI object. The model name will be GPT-4 because we want to use GPT-4. One thing you need to keep in mind though, to use GPT-4, you need to go to your OpenAI account and set up billing and add some funds to your uh, account. I added just $10 to begin with and that has been enough for me to uh, build the code for this video and test that it works and even to go through this video and show you the examples. So if you just want to start with something, just want to experiment with it, $10 should be enough to begin with. I think there needs to be a dash in there. And we can also set up the temperature. The temperature value is between zero and one. And that is basically the randomness of this model. So, or the results, randomness of the results that you're getting back. If it's zero, it means that it's going to be kind of deterministic and you're going to get the same answer to the same question. If you set it to one, there is a high chance that you're going to be getting varying results. And then I'm going to call the create pandas data frame agent function that I've already imported. I need to pass the chat variable to it. I need to pass the data frame. And uh, let's keep it like that for now. And this will be my agent. One thing to note here is if you already have your OpenAI API key in your environment variables, you don't have to do this. But if you passed it or if you created a, just a normal variable on your notebook for it to make it easy to use, you also need to pass a named variable, OpenAI API key, to make sure that you can uh, do your authentication with the OpenAI's API. All right. Now actually our agent is ready to ask questions to it. So let's ask some simple questions to see that it works. Just say agent run. For example, what is the average sepal length? The average sepal length is approximately 5.843. So we can actually check if this is correct. We just need to say iris and uh, no, not even that much. We just need to get the sepal length. Length and do a mean. And yeah, that's, that's exactly the correct answer. Uh, I'll show you one other thing. Actually, if you want to understand how uh, the model came to this decision and what code it used and what the um, thinking process has been, you can set the verbose to be true. And then let's ask another question to it. Uh, maybe something a bit more different. I can say, what is the max sepal width? And I'm also not going to 
uh, include the underscore here. Let's see if it understands that I'm talking about the second column here with for um, setosa. All right, so as you can see now, we have more information coming in. It's telling us what it's doing. Thought is to find the maximum sepal width of the species setosa. It understands that setosa is a species. I need to filter the data frame for rows where the species is setosa, then find the maximum value in the sepal width column. It even tells us what code it uses, which is great. If you want to make it look like you did it. <laughs> and it says, I know the final answer, the maximum sepal width for setosa is 4.4, uh, which is great. All right, so if you just wanted to learn how to use the Pandas data frame agent with GPT-4 on Langchain, this is honestly all of it. Uh, but if you want to hang around, I will show you some more interesting questions so that we can test the abilities of these agents. So I'm just going to do the same things that we did before, import Pandas and all the import all the Langchain modules that we need. But right now, instead of importing a sample data set, I'm going to import the Amsterdam Airbnb data set that I mentioned before. So just call this Amsterdam Airbnb. Pandas read CSV Amsterdam Airbnb.csv. All right, so let's understand this data set a little bit. It's a data set that has more than 8,000 uh, listings and has 10 columns. So let's take a quick look at it, see what we have. All right, so um, the index column is not read correctly. So I'll just fix that, index call zero. All right, that looks better. So we have the listing URL, we have the name, uh, description, whether the host ent identity is verified so that's true or false a host is super host or not. So we see only T or F for that, which is great because then we can um, check if the Langchain agent can actually understand that true T stands for true, F stands for uh, false. Uh, how many beds there are, amenities in the list, that's also great. Um, and then review scores rating and the price. We need to create the agent first again, of course. So let me just copy and paste the code again here. Uh, I just need to change the data frame from being the iris data frame to the Amsterdam Airbnb data frame. Okay, now we have our agent. I'm going to start asking questions. Let's start with an easy one. Uh, I want to see how fast it works uh, with 8,000 listings. So I'll say, what is the average price? All right, this is actually interesting. I thought I was asking a very simple question but turns out I'm not. So let me stop this for a second. It looks like I've run into some uh, rate limit. But before that, so I wanted to ask the random, uh, I wanted to ask the average price of all of these listings. And, but the price is a st string object. So what happens is it needs to convert it to a uh, float before it can calculate the average. So that's what it tells me that it's doing. Uh, says to find the average price, I first need to convert the price column from a string to a numeric type. Then I can use a mean function to calculate the average, which is great. This is what it's doing here. It's replacing the dollar sign. Um, it's basically make, removing it and then turning it into float and then using uh, the mean function to get us the mean value. But in the meantime, it looks like I reached a rate limit. So let's see if I can run more questions. And before I continue, I just want to make sure that I cast all of the um, price into a float type so that we're not going to run into the same problem over and over again. And that might be uh, causing the problem with the rate limit because it needs to uh, cast everything into float on the price column and then do the necessary things. But it's good to know that it's going to be able to deal with that problem too. So let's ask a new question. And this time I want to ask something a bit more vague. I'm going to ask it, which listing has the best value for money? And this way we can also see what is, how it's going to define value for money. All right, it says to determine the best value for money, we need to consider both the price and the score, uh, the rating score. Okay, so it's quite simple. I might've expected for it to maybe include um, amenities 
or the number of beds or whether the host is a super host or not but it decided to use the rating and the price uh, and then sort it and then get the best one so apparently the townhouse in Amsterdam that has 4.65 uh, ratings is the best one we even get the URL for it all right next question so I want to see if it's going to be able to deal with the fact that the amenities is a column of lists so I'm going to say which listing has the most amount of oh even that's even too simple I'm going to ask ask which listings have uh, Wi-Fi I'm not even going to mention amenities so let's see if it can figure out where to look for uh, whether a listing has Wi-Fi or not all right that's very interesting so what it says is to find a listing that have Wi-Fi, I need to check the amenities column of the data frame. If the string Wi-Fi is present in the amenities list, then the listing has Wi-Fi. I can use the str contains function to pandas to check if Wi-Fi is present in the amenities column, which is great. And even after that, it's not done. It tells us the listings that have Wi-Fi are those um, those whose amenities column contains string Wi-Fi. Uh, however, the output is too large to display completely, so I'm just going to show you the listing URL. Um, that is quite impressive that it was able to understand that the Wi-Fi is an amenity and it's going to be listed in a, a list of strings, and then it's going to turn it into a whole list into a string, and then look for the word Wi-Fi. And it looks like nearly all of them have Wi-Fi, which is you know not surprising. What if we look for what would be not common? Fire ex kitchen maybe? Maybe some houses don't have a kitchen. Wait, let's just stop it first. Okay, my last attempt. Coffee maker. The main issue is I'm kind of getting spooked by the fact that it is returning nearly all of the listings. Uh, right, I just got it. It's not actually just because I keep seeing 8,385 here I thought it was returning nearly all of them, but actually the amount that is returning is 6,054 which makes more sense. So it seems like this is working. Uh, there are no problems and uh, I just thought maybe I got it, but no <laughs> And the last thing I want to try is whether it can distinguish what T and F stand for so I'm going to ask it what percentage of hosts are super hosts? All right, so it says to find a percentage of hosts that are super hosts, I need to count the number of T and true, it even says what it stands for. Um, that's quite impressive, honestly. Uh, this is great. You can actually get answers to vague questions. I mean, maybe not the answer that you want, like especially with the um, best value for money. Maybe you want it to include some other things, but maybe it's even possible to tell it to say like, make sure you consider the number of bedrooms, make sure you consider the number of uh, bathrooms, for example. Uh, it looks like that might be possible. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you uh, learned how to use the Pandas data frame um, agent. If you have any questions or if you have an interesting way that you can use this agent, let me know and I will see you in the next video. Just as a last note, I wanted to mention uh, as a reference so that you know how much money you might be spending with uh, GPT-4 is I started all of this project with $10 in my account and you know there is the times that I ran, ran the queries on screen and off screen as a preparation to make this video and right now it's at 7.82 and of course we're not running really big queries, very complicated queries and I did run into some rate limits uh, while I was um, asking the questions but so you know just so you know just so that you have a reference point in terms of how much money this might cost when you're using it for a project.